Most gracious Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and praise you for this day, this beautiful day. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our life, health, and strength to give tonight for our limbs. The blood is still running warm in our veins. Heavenly Father, we thank you for just touching us this morning, shaking us. Because if you had not done that, we would still be asleep, Heavenly Father. So we just want to praise you and glorify your name forever. Because you are Lord of Lord and King of Kings, and none like you in all the earth. Heavenly Father, we thank you for just the, those that are shut in and can't get out. Heavenly Father, those that are homeless, Heavenly Father, we ask you to look on them. Those that are sick and afflicted with pain, Heavenly Father, in the hospital, give them some release, or whether they are home, Heavenly Father. What are they suffering? We know that you are a great healer, Heavenly Father, and there's no illness or disease you cannot heal. Heavenly Father, thank you for looking at the hospital wards and prison wards, mental institutions. Heavenly Father, most of all, those that do not know you, Lord, the Savior in our life. Touch something in them, Heavenly Father. Stir them. Let them know that they still have an opportunity to come into your saving grace before it's too late. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our homes, our surroundings, traveling mercy. Heavenly Father, I'm thankful to the Lord ahead of our country. Of our states, and Father, thank you for the and every church and ministry that's trying to uphold your word and do your will, Heavenly Father. We forever praise you and glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, clap your hands. Today, I would like to uh, bring you a message from Luke chapter 2. If you would turn to me, Luke chapter 2, I would like to read the Christmas story. Those that have the Bibles. Luke chapter 2, and it reads In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. That was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, a Sarri. And all went to be registered, each his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with the child. Uh -huh. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. She gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothing and laid him in the manger because there was no place for them in the, in the inn. And in the same region there was a shepherd out in the fields keeping watch over the flocks by the night. And the angel and, and, and an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel of the Lord said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace amongst those who he is pleased. And when the angel went away from them, into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which is the Lord, which the Lord has made known unto us. And when they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger, and when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told to them concerning the child. And all who heard 
is wondering at what what the shepherd told. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherd returned, glorified and praising God for all he had heard and seen. It had been and had been told to them. Also in Matthew chapter 2, verse 11 and 12 says, And going into the house, and so the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opened the treasures and offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed on their own country, on their own, to their own country by another way. Please bow with me the word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise for this moment. Bring forth your word, Heavenly Father. And talk about the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you and we praise you that your word not returned for it, Heavenly Father, but it touches someone's heart, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the speaker, but you take control, Heavenly Father, that the word that you would like to be hearing be hearing. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I would like to start out by uh, trying to get your attention, make sure everybody's paying attention. So, this is about a Christmas tree. It said, admiring the Christmas tree displayed in the neighbor's window, Nathan asked his father, Daddy, can we have a Hanukkah tree? His dad said, What? No, of course not, says the father. Nathan says, why not? Father bewildered, says, well, Nathan, because the last time we had dealing with a lighted bush, we spent 40 years in the wilderness. <laughs> so he didn't want to spend another 40 years in the wilderness. Today, I'd like to talk about the gifts. They've been around Christmas time, Christmas coming up. It's a time for gifts and giving gifts and receiving gifts. I know that the world has gotten so commercialized that the reason for the season has been put aside or by some even forgotten. Today I'd like to talk about the gifts. So most people enjoy this time of year and look forward to it. All around the world, families and friends prepare to give presents to one another. Most children believe in a gift giver. So most children believe in a gift giver. Little children and big children believe in a gift giver. They don't care as long as they can get the gift. In some places, it's often St. Nicholas, Chris Kringle, Santa Paul, or Father Christmas. But in parts of Germany and Austria, they believe in a Christ kind. And in Spain, they believe that it's the wise man. <clears throat> and in parts of Italy, they believe it's the old lady called Befina. So in Italy, they believe mm -hmm. the old lady brings forth the gift, you know. And I know you've all heard of Chris Kringle and Santa Claus, and of course, we all know of the wise men. Those gifts are, those gifts are, those gift givers are traditional, lead the gifts in different places. So, you know, and we have our tradition, it's not always the same around all over the world. In some parts of Europe, these gifts are left in a shoe or a boot that the children leave. So I was, as I was doing this, I was thinking about how, how in the world would you leave a 70 inch flat screen in a shoe? That'd be kind of hard to get in there. <coughs> or Mercedes Benz. But I guess you could leave the remote or the key there. In the US and 
and Italy and, UK, and the UK presents presents are sometimes left in stockings and often hang by the fireplace. Anybody still hang their stocking by the fireplace? I think it's a good look, but you know, can't get too much in a stocking by the fireplace, maybe a little candy. Most of the gifts that our children look for, we look for, are too big to go in the stockings. In many countries, presents of friends and families are left under a Christmas tree. And they are open on Christmas Day with all the families and gathered together. And is it or is it a coincidence that the Christmas tree, we celebrate Christ's life, we also celebrate the death of Christ with a tree, the old rugged cross. How about the lights that we put on the Christmas tree? I had lights in my house one, day, one time and someone told me, that, oh yeah, he's worshiping the lights. How about, um, didn't Jesus tell us he's the light of the world? That's right. That we have light in us from him. It's just a reminder to let our little light shine so that the world would know and worship our Father. So the tree and the lights also would be a reminder that Jesus is Lord and King, King. We're reminded by the tree and the lights of the birth and death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In John 12, 8, and John 8, 12, again, Jesus spoke into him, I'm the light of the world. Whomsoever shall follow me will not walk in darkness, but will have everlasting life. Right. So Jesus, several times, he speaks of the light. You know. He said, those evil deeds are done in the darkness. But when you shed, you know, when the light comes, those things, you, you, you see all those things. As we are, as we give and receive gifts, we are reminded that Christmas itself is really about the biggest present God gave to the world over 2,000 years ago. Amen. One of the main reasons we have a custom of giving and receiving present is that Christmas reminds us of the present that was given to us, Jesus. The present that was given to Jesus by the wise men. And the scripture tells us there were gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Amen. They said the gold, if I may talk about the present, the gold associated with king. And as we as Christians believe that Jesus is king of kings, so it's fitting that he received gold. Right. Also, he was soon had to leave where he was born because there was a king that was seeking to kill him before he was two years old. So I, I imagine this gold would come in handy. So we represent the gold as king. There was also frankincense. Frankincense is sometimes used in worship. It shows that Jesus is worthy of our worship and our praise. We should show the world how much we love the Lord by praising Him. with our obedience. Amen. And they also said uh, the gift was myrrh. Now myrrh was a, a perfume or a, um, a type of 
in bowel fluid. <clears throat> that to put on the dead bodies to make the bodies smell better and it was a preservative for the body. We as Christians believe that it should that Jesus would suffer and die for us. So let's think about those three gifts for a moment. It's the gold. King of King, Lord of Lord, frankincense, worthy worship, and the murder that he would die for us one day. Amen. See, we have salvation through the birth, death, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. See, God already knew when he sent him here that he would have to die for us. That uh, he had prepared the way. He had prepared for his um, life on earth, prepared for uh, his worship and how we should worship him and that he would teach us how we should live, how we should walk worthy of the calling on this earth. And that we would recognize that even though it was a horrific and terrible death, that all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord and are the call according to his purpose. Even though we don't want to see it, or didn't want to see the horrific death of Christ, it was for our salvation because he was, he was the only one that was worthy to die. So they looked all over, they couldn't find nobody, nobody worthy to die. So our Lord and Savior thought it not robbery mm. to wrap himself in this human flesh, come down to earth, walk on earth and show us how we should live, and then to die on the cross. But he didn't just die and stay there. He went down to hell took the sting out of death, took the victory from the grave, and he ascended back into his Father. Right now, he's on the right hand of God, interceding for us. Yes. One of the most famous verses in the Bible is John 3.16, and it reads, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life through him. So church, we can all smile, we can shout, we can rejoice, because if you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior in your life, you now have everlasting life. See, no grave can hold you. This old world can't, it may be trying to, but it can't hold you, it can't beat you up like that, because you have an advocate, someone, Interceding for you right now, daily. Yes, church. As we think about all the gifts and things that we will give, are excited about them. And those that we will give, and also hoping people are happy with it. Just think, as I'm closing. Church, we have the greatest gift of all. And it's from the greatest gift giver of all. Amen. See, he wrapped him in swaddling clothing. Amen. He laid him in a manger just for you and I. So that we would have abundant life, not only here on earth, but everlasting life with him. He is now on the right hand of the Father, on our behalf, interceding for us. So when the devil, the accuser there, is saying, well, look at Brickhouse, look at how bad he's been, look what he did, he made a mistake there. God, Jesus said, no, look at me. He steps in between. And for all of us, as Satan, the accuser, accuses you, God is there interceding. Jesus is there interceding before the Father for us, yeah. saying, don't look at him. Look at me. Thank you. God bless you.
stand. If there's one that does not know Jesus as Lord and Savior in their life today, now's the opportunity to come to Him. See, salvation is a gift. Freely, can't buy it. You can't work hard enough to earn it. It's a free gift. He said, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe within your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you are saved. So is there one today that one has received the gift of salvation that's freely given to us by our God?